to the big man. Goff throws. Wow. It is <laughs> oh. oh, he right swiped at him. Oh, yeah. Makes the catch and picks up a Lions first Are down. Are you kidding me? The athleticism, just motion. the whole nine. I'm like, what is going on? Why is this big athletic freak going in motion? <laughs> Nobody expected that. Thank you for coming back, sports fans. I'm your host, Johnny Gaz. Thank you for returning for another video. Today, we're continuing our positional breakdowns of the 2024 Detroit Lions. Today, we're focusing on the offensive linemen. A great topic as we leave last season. What a historical 2023 for the Detroit Lions. We've talked about it over and over and over again, so we won't beat that up. But today, we are going to focus on the trenches. We have a fantastic breakdown of topics today. Today, we are going to review the depth chart coming out of 2023, heading into 2024. We're going to profile what I believe to be the best offensive lineman in the NFL, Penny Sewell, as you see here. We're also going to look at the upcoming free agents for the Detroit Lions, as well as some potential free agent targets on the offensive line. And then we'll also look at some draft targets as well and discuss the overall strategy as we look at free agency, the draft, and the big picture as we head into 2024. And of course, I will give my final thoughts and opinions on what they should do up front for the offensive line. Let's get into this video. Now, before we go any farther, make sure to like the video if you are digging the vibe and what we're doing here today. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos here with Johnny Gaz Sports. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Now, we talked about in previous videos the importance of defense as they head into the 2024 season. We know where the Lions struggled. It is defensively. So, in my opinion, the top two needs as they head into the offseason, are on the defensive line and in the defensive backfield. But with all that being said, this team will be made by what they do up front. Jared Goff, the quarterback, has to be protected to be at maximum efficiency. For Jared Goff to play at MVP status level, he needs to have a sturdy offensive line in front of him. He needs to have an offensive line in front of him that's able to establish a run game that's able to work play action and none of that happens unless they are sturdy on the offensive line so in my opinion although defense is top priority they cannot lose focus on where their bread is buttered and that is the offensive line so we're going to focus very heavily on what they should do up front here today let's start by looking at the depth chart we won't focus on the tight ends, but they are very important when you consider the overall functionality of the offensive line, especially in the Ben Johnson offensive scheme. So a guy like Sam Laporta, who we have focused on in many other videos, um, is a huge piece to this. They did re-sign both Brock Wright and Shane Zilstra, so they will be returning in 2024. So they've pretty much filled up the tight end room. They are three guys that are familiar with the system and will have so much continuity as they head into 2024. So moving past that, let's focus on the offensive line group, the tackles, the guards, and of course the center. Let's just work top down. Taylor Decker, a culture guy, organizational guy, an emotional leader of the Detroit Lions, just a fantastic tackle who has been, again, with the organization for many, many years. At left guard, Jonah Jackson, who we know is a free agent. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here in just a moment. Frank Ragnow, again, another pillar piece to this organization. He is tough as nails. He's proved through the end of the season and into the playoffs that he is one of the top offensive linemen in the league. He struggled through injuries to both legs, knees, ankles, pretty much you name it. He has a horrific toe injury that he, he has been dealing with for several seasons. Um, but he is just a cog that makes that whole offensive line run. Um, and he's he's been around for a while. Past that at guard, you do see still listed here, uh, Hala Pulivati Vaitai. Unfortunately, they didn't get much out of him in 2023. He was injured early on, as he was the season before, and he is, again, a free agent. So we will talk about that here in just a moment. To replace him was Graham Glasgow. He served very well in that role. He played a huge role in being able to move not only both guard positions, but also filling in at center when Frank Ragnall would go out. So he is a big piece to this. 
And of course, Penny Sewell. I mean, you really can't say much more about this man. He is, you know, we said Taylor Decker, an emotional leader. Well, I think this guy is is anything and everything above and beyond that. I mean, he is the quintessential captain. He is the vocal leader. He's the emotional guy. He's proven himself. Um, he's he's athletic. He's got the size. He's got speed. I mean, he's willing to go at it with anyone. So it. Everything else, like I said, although Frank Ragnow is the center and he's he kind of runs the show as far, as far as calling signals and all that stuff up front, nothing else happens unless Penny Sewell is part of this. So to me, we have to highlight him more than anything else. In my opinion, he is possibly the best offensive lineman in football. And within a few years, will certainly establish himself as that. He will earn himself that money and... And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move past the depth chart discussion. Let's get into a little bit more of the depth pieces here. Matt Nelson, again, a free agent as we head into 2024. Coyote Awasika filled in very nicely towards the end of the season there at backup guard when Jonah Jackson went out. We talked about Graham Glasgow basically being able to fill in in any place across the offensive line, but primarily for the fill-in for Vitae at the right guard position. And again, Matt Nelson as your sort of floating tackle. You also had Colby Sorsdahl, who was a draft pick the previous season. Didn't give you much, but did fill in here and there uh, when you had injuries up front. And of course, Dan Skipper. We don't want to skip out on, on <laughs> no pun intended, the skip. Um, a big part of uh, uh, the backup role there on the offensive line. He's able to float between both tackle positions. And they did use him in a lot of different schemes, especially in goal line situations and those tackle eligible situations that they seem to handle so well so again he's a very important part of this um so that's kind of a brief look at the depth chart here as we leave 2023 and head into 2024 what's very important to consider before we move forward discussing free agents the draft is how the lions will allocate their cap space as we head forward the bottom line is Penny Sewell, as we've mentioned, is the heart of this team. He is the heart of the offensive line and maybe the organization as a whole. Because of that, and as we've discussed with other pillar players, like Amon Ross St. Brown in a previous video, Jared Goff, Aiden Hutchinson, Penny Sewell also fits that mold. And because of that, you're going to have to pay him as such. He's earned it. He will continue to earn it. So as you see here, courtesy of Spot Track, you see... His current calculated market value is at 22.6. I actually believe that to be low. The current highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL is Laramie Tunsil, and I believe he makes about $25 million annually. So right now you have Penny Sewell on a rookie deal, but you will have to pay him offensive lineman top tier dollars here probably after this season, before you get into the 2025 season. And by the time we get there, most likely we're probably looking more in the realm of 25, 26, 27 million dollars annually. So you have to consider that as part of your organizational cap plan moving forward before we talk about free agents in the draft. Now let's look at the potential upcoming free agents leaving the Lions here as we head into the 2024 season. Want to throw a shout out to sharpfootballanalysis.com. They have a very nice breakdown for us here, as you see, that gives you the 2023 snap percentage. And what I like about that is it shows ultimately the importance and how much a player is on the field for the Lions. So obviously today we're focusing on the offensive linemen. So let's start with Graham Glasgow. We just talked about how important he was in the offensive line, filling in for Vitae and his injury up front. He's also able to handle the other guard and center position. He is an unrestricted free agent, and he was, as of this entire group, he had the highest snap percentage. He is 32 years old, so he is obviously getting towards the end of his career. But I think that combined with Jonah Jackson, who we're going to talk about here in just a moment, I think it's going to be very important that we re-sign the Lions re-sign Graham Glasgow. He's a versatile piece. I think he can give them certainly at least one more year. So you could look at maybe a one-year deal, maybe a two-year deal. That's what I would do with Graham Glasgow. I think he's that important. Now let's move on to Jonah Jackson. I think this is the biggest hole that you have, the biggest offensive line decision you have to make as you head out of this season. 
He's an unrestricted free agent, and he will be coveted by other teams there in free agency. Um, he is only 27 years old, so he certainly has many good years ahead of them, although he's coming off a few injury-prone seasons and maybe not his best as a Lion. I still think that he will be... He'll, he'll earn a lot of money as a free agent. And because of that, I don't know the Lions are going to be willing to pay him. Um, again, they're going to have to save money for other players. We just touched on Penny Sewell and some others. So I think that they allow Jonah Jackson to take the deal that's best for him. I don't think they're going to spend the money here because they'll save a little bit by bringing Graham Glasgow back on a lighter deal. So that's my opinion on what happens with, with Jonah Jackson up front at the guard position. At right guard, again, we've talked about Vitae. I think he's proven that he is an injury-prone player. He's not given the organization enough to justify, I think, another contract. So he will also, I believe, be leaving the organization. That means they will only be signing one of the three guards that they have as free agents heading into 2024. So we will talk about how they will fill that hole here in just a moment. We also have free agents at the tackle position. Backups Dan Skipper and Matt Nelson are both unrestricted free agents. I believe that they will re-sign one, if not both, of those tackles to make sure that they don't have to worry about filling holes at the tackle position as well as they head into 2024. Now let's also look at some potential free agent targets to fill those holes on the offensive line. And we're going to focus on the guard position because we know we think that's where the ultimate hole will be. Now this will all depend on the other moves that Brad Holmes and the organization decides to make. As we talked about earlier in the video, I think defense is of greater importance here. So if they make a splash move, if is the key word there, I really think it's going to be on the defensive side of the ball. So saying that and thinking that, I don't know that they're going to make some kind of big splash move at guard. I believe that they re-signed Graham Glasgow, so they've now filled that right guard position. He can also fill in at center. So in that case, I think you have to get something in free agency and or the draft, and maybe both. So let's start with the free agents. You see the list here. Let's first rule out Ezra Cleveland. As of the recording of this video, he was re-signed. So he is not going to be an option. The one name that keeps coming up over and over and over again on the guard position is Dalton Risner. Now, he was traded from Denver to Minnesota and filled in well at the guard position with Minnesota this past season. I think that's the kind of guy that comes at the price that they're willing to pay. He's also they're familiar with him because, again, he was in the division. He's a younger player, so it will give, him, give the Lions a few years to use him and build that offensive line continuity or continue that. So I think that that would be someone that they could look at. You know, outside of that, some of these other guys, Robert Hunt, Kevin Dotson, Connor Williams, Lloyd Cushenberry, I think they're going to be a little bit too high priced for what the Lions are willing to, to spend. And we talked about Jonah Jackson. I think he's also in that realm of that money amount that we're talking about. So that's why they're, they're going to go ahead and let him walk. So if the Lions don't necessarily fill the need at guard or on the offensive line through free agency, then they have to look towards the draft. Now, I also think that you could do both, you know, get yourself a moderately priced free agent that you're happy with at guard, but also draft yourself the guy that you want to also get involved at guard or be the ultimate replacement for Frank Ragnow down the road. I think that's certainly on the table here for the Lions. So let's talk about a couple draft prospects. The biggest name and I think the best fit if they could get him, would be Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. I think he is the top center in the draft. I think he would be the absolute perfect replacement for Frank Ragnow down the road. And I'm not looking to push Frank out the door. I just think he's in a situation where the injuries are starting to pile up. And eventually, I think that starts to fade away and you have to start to plan towards the future we talked about being able to draft a guy that you don't have to pay a ton of money up front and if you're able to get a, a good a good good player up front that you don't have to pay you can then spend that money elsewhere penny sewell i'm on ron St. brown so and so forth so i think jackson powers johnson out of oregon is a name to watch out for here in the draft another name to watch out for is cooper bb out of kansas state 
The reason I like him is the versatility. He kind of played all over the offensive line there. He returned to school for another year after being considered maybe the best offensive lineman in the class. And and he had another good season. So I think the versatility of kind of a guard center, you know, guy is really what they're looking for. So definitely be on the lookout there. And if they're not looking necessarily to get the guard at 29, maybe in the second round, you could look at a guy like Zach Zinter out of Michigan, who we've talked about in a previous video, but another guy they're familiar with. So I do think there are certainly options up front, either in that first round or the second round, or if they want to finagle some picks and get the guy that they really want, Powers Johnson, you know, maybe that's the way they go. But again, I think either way, the Lions are definitely going to look to the draft to supplement their offensive line. I think they have to in this case. It's all about grit, right? Brad Holmes, the organization, Dan Campbell, everybody in that locker room exemplifies grit. And it all starts up front on the offensive line. It all starts with this man, Penny Sewell. Everything else works itself out from there. Jared Goff, the running game, the offense. The offense is better. The defense gets better. Everything works out. But it's all predicated on what happens up front. So as much as we've talked about in previous videos, the importance of making sure the Lions focus on defense in this offseason, it is extremely important that they don't lose sight of their greatest strength, and that is the offensive line. They must supplement the guard position in two different areas. One, they need a starter. They need another guard starter because I think they're going to lose Jonah Jackson. So through free agency of the draft, they have to find the guy to fill that spot. They also have to consider depth pieces for Frank Ragnow and for future years down the road for guys like Taylor Decker, who may leave the organization in a few years. Cannot lose focus of the offensive line. The strength of this team is there, and they have to work out everything else from that position. I appreciate you guys coming along for another video. Thank you so much. Make sure to hit the like button if you're digging everything we got going on here at Johnny Gaz Sports. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. We're definitely going to have a full draft preview as we get a little bit closer to the draft in Detroit. We'll also have some fun videos, kind of a topic of the day, and just some fun stuff coming up on the channel. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for your time. This has been an amazing ride. I hope everyone has a fantastic day.